Another week, another anime episode review of Shangri-La Frontier from your baldy friend Scott. From my previous video, I talked a lot about the original setup of the story and how, if done right, you can handle exposition in your opening episodes or chapters. SLF somehow succeeded in doing that and just continued forward with more of it in this episode. It's not as heavy in this episode though. I felt like episode 2 continued to show more of our hero's journey. Ah, uh, the classic hero's journey as they overcome staggering odds on their journey to accomplish some sort of goal. Stop for a second and think about how that works in a story like SLF though. Do we have a final goal set for this story? Is it possible to have a final goal for a story like this? I say yes, but it's kind of ambiguous. It's not something cliche like kill the Demon King. It's more along the lines of become epic and beat a bunch of bosses, which makes the end of the story not as important as the journey to get there. So what I think this story and similar stories such as the anime Bofudi do really well. The journey itself is what's so much fun to watch, and the character interactions as the story goes along makes it more interesting little by little. So far, we only really have two or so named characters in the story, but I know from reading the manga that that will change. The importance of keeping your story moving and interesting from beginning onwards is a very important part of writing. You can have a great action-packed opening, but if by page 50 your story is stalled out and gotten boring, it's going to be hard to keep your readers interested. We're already two episodes into SLF, and we're already getting introduced to one of the final bosses of the game our MC is playing. And I love the build up to the reveal of that boss so much. Every monster Sunraku has fought up to this point has had the ability to revive so that other players can fight against them. Then we're introduced to something at the end of the episode that is known as a unique monster. Something that in the maybe two years of existence of the game, no player has been able to defeat. For a thrill-seeking game addict like Sunraku, this is heaven. Also notice something with Sunraku's character this episode that I thought was interesting. Sunraku is mainly a dexterity and luck-based build, focusing on making critical hits. In a game like D&D, for example, he'd likely be playing a rogue class that can cause a whole ton of damage up close, but not be able to take all that much damage themselves. The counterpoint here, at least up to this point, is that he's by himself. He's not with a party that can help him out when his weaknesses get in the way. It's all up to him to overcome the challenges that he's facing. The show even goes out of its way to separate him from the other players by making his appearance so bizarre that most of the other players are disturbed by it. With the cliffhanger like that, it really pulls you in though. I'm super excited to see this upcoming scene animated. Until next week, Okini!